Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today I have a really odd piece of alder. My son-in-law Kelvin came up over the weekend and helped me cut up this large stump kind of a piece of wood that's been sitting here as long as we've lived here, about 30 years. So Kelvin came up and helped me cut this up and, and this piece that you're looking at was just a, a scrap that we cut off of that block of wood and if it would have been up to me, I probably would have just left it out there. Very odd shape. I've been standing here looking at it and holding it in different manners, trying to figure out how I'm going to mount it on the uh, lathe. But I'm going to have to do that because Kelvin said, boy, I can't wait to see what becomes of that one. So I'll show you what this thing looks like. It's about 11 inches from here to here. And about 11 inches from here to here. And it's about 8 inches from here to the top of this. It's got some pretty heavy bark on it. It's got some moss still on there. But back here, <laughs> How am I going to hold this thing? I am uh, going to attempt to do a live edge. I want to leave as much bark as I can possibly get to stay. Sounds a little hollow. I, I don't think this bark's going to stay on here. Over here, it's a little more solid and it looks better. I, I just don't know what's going to stay and what isn't. I could shoot some CA in there and see if it'll help. Maybe, maybe I will. I don't know. Anyway, so this is obviously going to be the top if we're going to go with a live edge. And that's going to be the bottom. So what I'm going to do is take a Forstner bit and clear out an area here. Because the bark is pretty thick. And I need to get down below that. And then I think I'm just going to mount it up between centers and try and find a place to put the uh, live center on, on this point. So stick around. This one's going to be a fun piece. Well, I just cannot imagine what kind of shape this is going to be. I just can't get my mind around it. But I, I'm going to approach from the bark side this way to kind of round these corners over. And the reason I'm doing that is because, like I said, I want to try and keep the bark on. I don't think I'm going to be successful. I did put CA all around here, but it still moves. I think it's too far separated from the wood. In any event, I'm still going to come this way instead of this way, which would absolutely peel the bark right off. It's probably coming off anyway, but we'll just see. And I'm just working up towards making a tenon on here sooner or later. Uh, we're going to be turning at about 600 RPM, mask and face shield on, 5 8 inch bowl gouge. Alright, we'll leave that for a little bit and go to work on the bottom here somewhat, I guess. Yeah, we're going to flatten off the bottom and make a tenon. Maybe. Well, uh, I don't know. Hang on. I made a couple of marks here where my tenon should be. Uh, I, I don't know if I can see them while it's spinning. I think probably not, but that's where it should be. So I don't want to come in too much, but I need to go way in there. i got to get below the point where I uh, cut out for my live center. Yeah, I can't see them, but they're there. Okay, now I think I can make a real mark. So that's my tenon. Now I think I'll leave that for a while and come back out here and work on the side again. I think I'm going to come way up here and start working my way down into some sort of a round shape. I don't know if I'm ever going to hit this side. But I'm working from the top side down again in an effort to keep that bark on.
Well, what do you know? That is full round except for some divots right here. Starting to be some pretty nice green in there. Boy, I hope that bark stays. You know, I might just have to, I might just have to stop and take the time to glue that properly. I sure would like to smooth that off before I stop, but I don't want to lose it either. Oh well. God hates a coward. Okay, I'm gonna stop, get my carpenter's glue, fill that void and clamp that down. You can see, I think that's gonna do the trick. I think it's real tight around here. Yeah, it's all tight until we get to here. Man, I'll tell you, the top side is not gonna be fun. It's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be reminiscent of that high low bowl I did. And I swore I'd never do another one of those. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is scary stuff. All right, see you back here in a while when the glue dries. Okay, I've just got the clamps off and my glue seems to have held, I think. It sounds a lot more solid than it used to, the bark. And I spent a couple of minutes finalizing my tenon size and the bottom here a little bit. So now I'm going to take a couple of passes across here and try and smooth this out. So that's next. As soon as I get my mask and face shield on and I have a freshly sharpened 5 8 inch bowl gouge and we'll be turning it about 880. I just bought this new jacket at Costco in hopes that it would serve as a uh, smock because it's a slippery material and the zipper goes all the way up to my neck and the sleeves tighten up but I keep forgetting to zip it up. So now I have a shirt full inside my jacket. Nice going Phil. Oh yeah, much better, much better. Okay, we can live with that. I'm telling you right now, this wing is going to cause huge problems once I turn this around. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? So the tool rest is going to be over here, and there's that wing coming around. Imagine it pointing this way. It's about seven and a half inches. This over here is about four and a half inches. <laughs> it's just going to be fun to work around. Plus, my glue is looking like it's not quite dry. This is, uh, this is the next day. This sat overnight. Oh yeah, shoot, look at that. Coming loose again. What's up with that? Dried all night in the clamps. Well, dang it. All right, stand by for sanding. This is going to take a little bit of time because of this wing out here. Uh, I'm starting at 80 grit. I'll work up through 400 grit. And I think once again I'm not going to put any sanding sealer on here until after we hollow the bowl out. First of all, to make sure that's possible. And second of all, because when I take it off of here, I want to take it in the house and microwave it because I've got some pretty good sized bug holes in here. I haven't seen any bugs. I think they're probably long gone, but who knows. So I want to do that before I get any kind of finish or sanding sealer on. So I'll see you back here when it's time to turn this around and start hollowing it out, which is going to be a joy, I'll tell you. 
Well, here's where we are. It's been a while. Uh, life intervened here, and, and uh, I thought I was going to get ahead, and now it's been like four or five days since I worked on this piece. Obviously, I've turned it around. Clean, I cleaned up the tenon and, and sanded the whole outside to 400. I had to glue and re-glue and re-glue the bark, uh, and then when I microwaved it, the glue came apart, of course. Should have expected that. Uh, the good part about that is it softened the glue and it softened the bark. And so when I put a clamp back on here, it held really well. And now it's been, like I say, four or five days and uh, it's, it's holding really good. So I'm happy with that. This is going to be a really small opening in the bowl, a really small inside of the bowl. And that's because of this, this short wing as opposed to this long wing. I really like this end. You can see the wood there and the wood there and then the bark in between. I mean, that's to me, that's beautiful. You also see the remnants of some chainsaw cuts and I left those intentionally. I have sanded this, it's very smooth, but there is just a little bit of texture to those chainsaw cuts and I like that. So anyway, so it's gonna be a pretty small opening because the problem is I don't want to disturb this at all. So I can't go beyond this edge right here. So that makes my bowl right about in here. So that's a pretty small bowl considering the size of the object that we have. This will be all bark up here and this will be bowl down in here and that's, that's it. So let me get my mask and face shield on. I'm going to use a half inch bowl gouge because this is kind of smallish and it'll give me a little more ability to get in there tight where I need to. And we'll get to turning. We're going to be turning at 1100 RPM. <laughs> well, this is a little scary because uh, my fingers want to be down here and that's where that is. I'm good when this one comes around, but that one, it's, uh, it is a little scary. Okay. How bad can it hurt? I'm really aware of it now. Yeah, I'm right where I want to be. Cannot come out here any further. But boy, I can't, uh, just can't, I can't get a good angle where I want to be. Got to get in there a little closer somehow. Now let me see. Yeah, that's probably okay. I should have just drilled it out, I guess. A viewer on a different video suggested uh, putting tape along the edges to, to uh, provide a little visibility. And I thought that sounded like a really great idea, so I thought I'd try it on this one. Uh, the problem is... I still can't really see. I mean, I see there's blue there. I, I don't know. I, when, when you're in the thick of it, when you're in here, it's different. It sounds like a great idea, and certainly I can see it's blue, but I, I just can't really see enough detail to get in there and, and do my work without getting my fingers torn up by this coming up, this piece here, coming up from underneath. So it's still kind of tough. Oh boy, it's going to look really good once I get some finish on here. You're going to be amazed. Kelvin, what would you get me into, buddy? That's my son-in-law, Kelvin, his idea.
I'm not proud of my not proud of my chisel work. I I, I just can't uh, just have no control being way out here. You know, I want to be up here. Maybe. I don't know if it's worth sacrificing two or three fingers for. Well, I think that's where we are. I'm going to get a scraper sharpened up and we'll see what we can do with that. This scraper might be a little too big, but we'll see how far we get with it. sure we're ever going to get there. Well sanding's going to be fun so stand by for that. So I'm going to start by sanding the bark and I'm going to do that with my Sandoflex. Many of you have seen me use this before and I will demonstrate it here in a second. This this is the original one. This is called a 350R Sandoflex. Now they make this kind. This is a 350R P and I suppose the P stands for plastic. I bought this off of eBay uh, but they this is the current model I believe far as I know and uh, it's a lot lighter weight than this is you can mount this like right in a chuck which I do frequently I mount the, the chuck in my lathe chuck and then I just stick this in that and you can hold your piece out here and rotate it like this and it's terrific it works great uh, I often use it on my drill especially in this situation I'm going to sand this bark with this which has 180 grit in it this is so much lighter for, for chucking in your drill. It's, it's got to be easier to handle. I've never used this. This is the way it came to me with my purchase off of eBay. There's a website I found. You don't have to go to eBay anymore. Uh, the website is called supergrit.com. Supergrit.com. And they sell these. And I think they're around 40 bucks. And the refills, which go inside here, uh, they sell for I think ten dollars. Maybe they're ten fifty, but if you buy multiples of like two, I think they're ten dollars each for the refill, and they last quite a little while. So I will demonstrate this for you. Sanding the grit with a hundred or sanding the bark with 180 grit just smooths it out. It leaves it basically unchanged. I do plan on taking off all of this moss that's on here, at least most of it. But it, it, it smooths it out so that you don't have anything to catch your fingers on or catch your clothes on. It doesn't hurt you. Right now it's a little bit rough. It's really not going to change much after I've sanded it, but it's going to feel so much better. So I'll show you that. Let me just chuck this up in my drill. By the way, I'm not connected to SuperGrit at all. I don't get anything if you buy something from them. They didn't provide me with anything. I didn't ask them to provide me with anything. I'm just telling you where you can get these. A lot of people ask. So you can get them on eBay or you can get them brand new from SuperGrit. And I'm just going to hold this. I'm going to hold this still with my left hand and I'm just going to hold this with my right hand. So that's what it looks like. If it wasn't such an odd shape, I could just spin this and just hold it out here. And it looks like I could do that a little bit anyway, but I couldn't do a really good job of it because of this. But if it was more round, didn't have this wing sticking way out here, it'd be a lot easier. And I do that all the time. That works really well. And the reason I'm telling you about Super Grit is because... Uh, if you go on eBay and, and try and find one of these to buy, you're going to spend at least $40, unless you happen to get lucky. I won't spend more than about $30 or $35. If, if it's a complete kit with the whole deal and two or three refills and, and nice brushes and all that, I'll, I'll spend $35, bucks, but that's my max. But you can buy a brand new, brand new one for $40, I'm pretty sure. 
from Super Grip. And on eBay, the refills, guys want ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen dollars. I mean, they're they're insane. Why not just buy direct? And I've never bought anything from Super Grip again. I get nothing from this. I'm just telling you where you can get them because people ask. So I'm going to be working on this bark for a little while, and I'll bring you back when it's time to start sanding the inside of this and. That's not going to be much fun. Real light touch. Boy, it ain't easy. Something keeps coming around and hitting me. And then I got to worry about my fingers up here as well. So it's just going to be slow going. I'm starting at 80 grit. I'll work up through 400 just like I did on the outside. I just refuse to hand sand. I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. Uh, anyway, then we'll put some uh, sanding sealer inside and out because I don't have any on the outside yet. And then I think we'll probably finish up with shellac. It's going to look great. See you in a bit. Well, as I suspected, that sanding was not particularly fun at all. Uh, these little, these bug holes down in here, I shouldn't say little, they're not little bug holes, they're pretty good size. Um, they would catch the edge of the sandpaper just as much as anything else would catch it. It was just, it was just a real chore. But it's done. It's smooth. And I think this is going to be a, a real good looking piece when it's all said and done. Some beautiful grain in here. It's been a while since I've turned alder, which as I mentioned earlier is just in this area, it's just considered firewood. It burns really nice, burns really hot. It's a hardwood, and tons of it is burned every day, which just about kills me. It's so plentiful, I really don't know why they don't use it for, you know, lumber, fine cabinet lumber. So, you probably don't want to watch this whole ordeal. It's going to be inside and the outside, like I mentioned. And it's going to take me a little while to get this all covered. So I'm going to put this on here and let it set for about an hour or so. Come out and smooth out the first coat with uh, scotch bright pads. But not the green ones, not the real coarse ones. I have some that are supposedly equal to 400 grit and 240, I think. So I'll save the 400 grit for the final smoothing. The bark edges soak this up quite a bit. Hey, there's a... Uh, uh, YouTube channel I'd like you to check out. The guy's name is Gary. His YouTube channel is called The Papa 1947. The Papa 1947. He's a wood turner. He's also a woodworker. He also uh, does metalworking. And in his wood turning, he does a lot of the same kind of stuff that I do, this kind of thing. But he also does uh, beautiful segmented pieces. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, the guy must be a mathematician or something, I don't know. Beautiful stuff. I, I, I can't even uh, think like he thinks. I don't understand, but he does, and that's what counts. Give him a look. The Papa 1947 on YouTube. Kind of a new channel. I don't think he has too many videos out there, maybe 10 or 12 or maybe a few more than that by now. He's in Oregon. He seems to come up with some great pieces of wood, as you might imagine, in Oregon. The Papa 1947. Give him a look. Maybe, uh, maybe subscribe. And uh, he and I have kind of become friends on, on YouTube. We talk back and forth. It's worth your time. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be doing for a while. i got to work kind of quickly now because i got to get the outside before the inside dries and wipe it all down and all like that. So I'm going to let you go. I'll bring you back here when it's time to turn this around and remove that tenon. So now I'm just about to apply my final finish of shellac. I've got three coats of uh, shellac-based sanding sealer on here and one coat of shellac. And now I'm going to put the last coat of shellac on. And then we'll be getting around to turning this around and taking off the tenon. Now sometimes when I'm putting on the final coat of shellac, it doesn't need any uh, buffing 
after, after the final coat. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why. Depends on the surface preparation, I suppose. I really like the way this turned out. Instead of a bark inclusion, it's more like we have a wood inclusion. And you can see it coming through right over here, right through the bark. Not everyone's gonna love these scratches, I'm sure, but I like them. And that's it. Wait for that to dry. See if it needs buffing, buff it if it does. So in about an hour, I'll see you back here and we'll take off that tenon. Well, I got lucky and sure enough, uh, the final finish did not need to be smoothed. It's just smooth as can be, so I'm pretty happy about that. What I'm gonna do now is install my woodworm screw and then a block of wood Then I'll just bring up the bowl and place it over that block of wood. Bring up the tailstock. Apply a little bit of pressure. Bring up the tool rest. Turn it on. Let's see how round we are or we aren't. Pretty good. Turn the speed up to about 600 and just slowly work away at that tenon. Yeah, okay, now we have good clearance. Now we'll switch to a 3 8 inch sweat back gouge and we'll just keep working at it with the sweat back. Okay, that's pretty small, so I'm going to turn the speed down to around 200 RPM. And I'm just going to place the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. And Apply pressure towards the headstock. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And it broke off, but I don't think we did any damage. Sometimes that happens. You just have to be ready for it. Yeah, that's fine. So now I just need to take it over here to the workbench and sand it up. Well, here it is. One alder bowl art piece. I think I'll call it an art piece. Bottom finished up nice. It's pretty nice all the way around. I really like this groove in here. I really like these bug holes. I mean, if you're going to have bug holes, you might as well have bug holes, huh? Those are big ones with matching on the inside. I can't say this was a fun piece because it was dangerous. It was scary. It was trying. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I sure would appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. Your comments are always welcome, and I respond to all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.